Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Welcome to this lesson on how to answer short answer questions. This type of question comes up regularly in the exam and can appear in any section of the test. They're particularly common in section 2, which will be a monologue set in an everyday social context. For example, a welcome talk for new college students. You must listen to the recording and write a short answer in each blank space provided. Sometimes more than one answer will be required. For example, the question might say, What are the two major concerns new students have regarding accommodation? This lesson covers everything you need to know. It includes sample questions, the strategy and some tips, vocabulary help, a practice question, and the answers. Here are two sample questions to give you an idea what to expect. Pause the video on this slide and the next if you want a few moments to read through them. This first question is from a past test paper. The recording is an extract from a talk given to a group who are going to visit the UK. There are three questions with two answers required for each one. This second question has been created specifically to teach you the strategy for answering short answer questions and to illustrate some tips. We'll be using it for some practice later in the lesson, so I'll tell you more about it then. You'll have a short time to prepare before the speaker or speakers begin talking. Use this time to familiarise yourself with the question and focus your mind on what you need to listen out for. First, Read the instructions carefully, paying particular attention to how many words you're allowed to write for the answer, as this does vary. The instructions for our sample question state that you must write no more than three words and or a number for each answer. If you write more than three words, your answer will be marked incorrect, even if the information you give is correct. The instructions do vary and the limit could be two words and or a number or only one word, so don't get caught out. The answers will come in the same order in the recording as they're listed in the question. So for this question, you'll hear answer one first, then answer two and so on. This makes it easier to pick out the answers than if they were in a random order. The next task is to try to predict what the answer might be. This will focus your mind on what to listen out for in the recording. Occasionally you'll be able to predict the actual word, but mostly it's one or more of these things that you'll be able to determine. The type of information required, for example a name, a date, a time, a phone number, an address or a price. Or the type of word required, such as a noun, an adjective or a verb. Any clues you can get will help you to understand the audio and identify the information needed for the answers. Have a go at predicting some of the answers in our short answer practice question. Pause the video to do this, then have a look at my predictions on the next slide. In this particular question, there aren't enough clues to guess any of the words, but we can make these predictions. Answer 1 will be a time. Answers 2 to 5 will all be nouns or possibly a noun plus an adjective. Synonyms and paraphrasing will be used extensively in the recording, so you'll not only be listening for the exact words that are used in the questions, but also different words and phrases that have the same meaning. In your preparation time, scan the questions and underline key words that are likely to be replaced by synonyms or paraphrased then quickly think of words that might be used instead. I've underlined some important keywords in our practice question. They are open, attractions, most popular, visitors, improvements, planned and next season. Can you think of some synonyms for them or ways that the information might be paraphrased? Pause the video and have a go. We'll look at the synonyms and paraphrasing that have actually been used when we review the answers. There are six types of vocabulary that can cause particular problems for students 
and some of them are regularly used in short answer questions. The six types are time, numbers, prices, dates, letters and addresses. You must be able to recognise them in speech and to write them correctly in your answers. I've written a whole lesson on this topic, including eight listening exercises, to help you recognise and learn these types of vocabulary. I put a link to it in the notes below this video. The examiners may try and catch you out with distractors. A distractor is a word or a phrase that changes or corrects the original piece of information given. So you may be given an answer and then have it taken away again. Here are some sample sentences containing distractors. I've highlighted the relevant words. For most of the year, we're open from 9.30am to 5.30pm, but now that the dark days of December have arrived, we welcome visitors from 10am and close at 4 o'clock. The birds of prey have long been our favourite display with visitors. However, this year the sheepdog trials have proved even more popular. Entrance price was £6.50 per person until May the 1st when it increased by 20 pence to £6.70. The use of but and however are particularly common distractors but there are many different words and phrases that can be used to change or correct a piece of information so be alert for them. My final tip is to never leave a blank space on the answer sheet. If you miss an answer, take an educated guess. This gives you at least some chance of getting it right. Don't stress about a missed answer or it will affect your ability to answer the next set of questions. Just make your choice and move on. It's now time for you to practice using this strategy on our sample question. Here it is again. The script I'm going to read out is a short promotional talk by a member of staff from a farm park attraction. Listen to it and identify the missing words. When you've completed the practice question, we'll go through the answers one at a time. At Eastover Farm Park, we're celebrating our most successful year to date. A family visit is definitely recommended, as there's something for everyone to enjoy from toddlers to the grandparents. Get there early though, as we're busy most days, but especially at weekends. Be at the gates at 9.30 when Farmer Tom unlocks and you can be the first visitors inside. There's enough to see and do to keep you busy all day. Pick up a free map to find your way around and locate all the attractions. Where will you start? Will it be the excitement of the Big Dipper? the milking parlour to see some real farm work or a cuddle with the rabbits and guinea pigs in the pets corner. Voted favourite feature for the past five years, our pet area has been knocked off pole position this year by a new boating lake and the miniature steam train. When you're in need of refreshments, head to the cafe or bring your own lunch to enjoy around the many picnic tables spread across the park. And don't forget to check feeding times if you want to watch our keepers giving the animals their midday meal. We love it that many of our guests come back time and time again and we're always working to develop the park for the future. Over this winter we'll be digging and stocking a trout fishing lake. You can bring your own rod or hire one on site. We also intended to install a bouncy castle until a visitor survey revealed that outdoor trampolines would be far more popular. So we're giving you what you asked for. Happy bouncing! Here are the correct answers. The words in brackets are correct but optional. Pause the video while you check them against your own answers. Then we'll go through them one at a time and examine the language that makes them correct. Answer 1 is 9.30 or 9.30 a.m. Here's the question followed by the sentence of the recording the answer appears in. Question. What time does the farm park open? And the sentence in the recording is. Be at the gate at 9.30 when Farmer Tom unlocks and you can be the first visitors inside. This synonym has been used. Open for 
unlocks. This is a typical example of how information will be paraphrased in the recording. The same information is expressed in two very different ways in the question and the audio text. Answers 2 and 3 are Boating Lake or New Boating Lake and Steam Train or Miniature Steam Train. Here's the question followed by the sentence of the recording the two answers appear in. The question is which two attractions are most popular with visitors? And the recording? Voted favourite feature for the past five years, our pet area has been knocked off pole position this year by a new boating lake and the miniature steam train. These synonyms have been used. Attractions for feature and a most popular for favourite. And did you spot the phrase that acts as a distractor? It is knocked off pole position. The speaker states that the pet area has been the favourite feature for the past five years, but then says that this situation has changed. It's very easy to get caught out by sentences like this, so listen very carefully. And finally, answers four and five, which are fishing lake or trout fishing lake, and trampolines or outdoor trampolines. Here's the question followed by the section with the answers in. Question. Name two improvements that are planned for the venue next season. And the recording. We love it that many of our guests come back time and time again and we're always working to develop the park for the future. Over this winter we'll be digging and stocking a trout fish lake. You can bring your own rod or hire one on site. We also intended to install a bouncy castle until a visitor survey revealed that outdoor trampolines would be far more popular. So we're going to give you what you've asked for. Here are the synonyms and paraphrasing that have been used. Improvements for development, planned for intended and next season for over the winter. The second sentence also contains a distractor, until did you spot it? The other clue that Bouncy Castle is not the second answer is in the use of the past tense. Intended. They had planned to install the Bouncy Castle, but then the situation changed. Well, that's all the answers done. I hope you found working through this practice question helpful. Now practice using this strategy with other short answer questions from past papers. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.